Guys, a mining tour, every person who finally sees how a facility runs for the first time, something clicks, okay? In a recent episode, I highlighted the fact that in 2016, the overall global exahash was at one. And today, it's around 600. On that episode, I was talking with Jeff Bryant, who's one of our site managers here at Compass. And today, I get to talk with someone who's been around Bitcoin mining since even before the global hash was at one exahash. So today, I get to sit down with Brad James from Mining with Brad. Brad, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Jarrett. Thank you for hopping on. And yet, the stat I share with you came from an episode I recently did with one of our site managers at Compass. And I remember when I looked that up, I was so shocked. Because to go from one to 600, I don't care if it's one Skittle to 600 Skittles, you know, if you give your, your child or your niece or your nephew one penny and then you give them 600 pennies, that's like, it's a crazy amount. So I'm glad to be able to have you on today. I know that you, you are an OG in this arena of Bitcoin mining and you've been around since way before. So if you could, I'd love a little intro and then talk about Bitcoin mining when you got in when, you know, three or five megawatts was a big deal. For sure. I, and I actually was in even before that. Uh, okay. When I graduated college, I, I went and bought some Bitcoin. But then when you're just out of college, you don't know what you're doing, right? So I ended up selling it all because I had to pay bills. Because rather than being financially responsible, I decided to go out on the weekends, right? I think we've all been there, <laughs> is what it is. But thankfully, in 2016, one of my mentors got me back into Bitcoin with mining. And we were literally mining out of a closet out of the back, back of his factory. And uh, in 2016... You literally, it was, we called it, we called it hillbilly mining, right? Like we had wooden <laughs> shelves, we had sawdust, like there was everything. There were S7s in there, GPUs, CPUs, all this stuff. And I didn't, I didn't realize that that was the stat, that one exahash back in 2016. Now I'm wishing, now I'm wishing I had pushed us harder to do more back then because that would have <laughs> been nuts. Anyway, uh, but then after that, I was asked to build an at scale facility, right? And you said one to five megawatts and all of this stuff back then nobody had an instruction manual nobody you couldn't find anybody who had done it before so making it up as you go really became like you understand the skill set of problem solving and being macgyver right that's that's what the cisco network engineer called me when he showed up at our site as i was like hey i don't know network stuff but we're growing more and we're building more sites the one person i'm going to invest in is a network architect who actually knows this stuff and i remember him showing up and looking at these covered racks literally literally steel racks covered with like a, a restaurant cover, right? Those four by six by two foot racks with holes sure. cut in the side and the miners sticking out one side and then a giant air handler blowing air into them. He's like, how did you come up with this? He's like, this isn't supposed to work. This is not how data centers work. And I was just, I said, well, I understood we needed airflow. I know we needed internet and I know we needed a lot of power. And it was a self-contained climate control. He's like, that's brilliant. And we had little lacrosse, like temperature probes on everything. So we could tell the internal pressure that on the phone. And he's like, this is nuts. I've never come across anybody who's flipped an old warehouse into a data center like this. And we had ethernet going every which way. Right. And I was like, I don't know what we're doing. We're just running cables and trying to get this thing done. I mean, it's crazy to think that now you said 600 exahash. Is that what it is now? Yeah. And, and once again, the exahash is always interesting, whether you're looking at the three day, the seven day, and right. I even think there's longer than that, but yeah, more or less let's, that's a, that's a working number. It's somewhere in and around there. Obviously curtailment plays a part and I do want to talk about curtailment, but yeah, 600 exahash. Let's go with that, man, man. Isn't that crazy? That's I, uh, yeah, I, I'm just like, we had a closet filled with 10 miners and I'm trying to do the math in my head as to like what that hash rate was. And now, and now to get, to get one exahash at a site is easy. Like that's the part that's blowing my mind right now. Huh? Well, the more, you know, the more, you know, <laughs> well, let's, let's go right there. You know, when I was preparing to talk with you, I was like, okay, mining with Brad. And then I got on your website and I'll let you shout that out at the end. It's a pretty, pretty simple domain there to shout out. But I was like, he is really on the ground doing the difficult work that not a lot of people see. Because when you think about, and even if you type in Bitcoin mining, go ahead, throw that in Google, type in Bitcoin mining, certain things come up. But unfortunately, you know, it, we're not thinking now because now maybe 
a couple of megawatts isn't a big deal. Now, like you said, if you have nine miners in your closet somewhere, it may not move the needle. People just don't care, right? It, it's not a publicly traded stock. And now there's, I just recently had Anthony Power on, who's one of the world's, I think, best Bitcoin mining analysis when it comes to publicly traded stocks. And you know, the numbers he's throwing around and the exa hash, and they're gonna be doing this merger and acquisition and hundreds of million here and a billion here. So when you think about having nine miners in the closet that you had, um, it's interesting to now consider that there are still people maybe on that scale or in and around that scale that are absolutely making a dent and more importantly, supporting this network. Because I think whenever I talk to someone new, and this has happened to you and anyone who's listening who's in Bitcoin, or if you're getting into Bitcoin, when you start to talk about decentralization, the opposite of that would be centralization. And I think many people in Bitcoin mining, they have this North star of worry. That's like, what if this gets too centralized? What if this gets to Wall Street? What if this gets to VC money? And I think what you're doing is continuing to say, no, you know, uh, we don't need to do that. We can still support anyone with their budget to get them up and running and have them be a part of the network. Exactly. And, and to your point, you know, I know you guys, you guys do this at Compass too, which is why I think there's a lot of synergy and there are people fighting that fight. But, but let's be honest, everything right now in the industry is very top heavy, right? You're, you're big, you've got 150 megawatts, you're running multiple facilities, you've got a staff of 100 some odd people, right? All of these things, you're making big deals, you're buying PPAs where you're getting hundreds of megawatts. Like all of those magnitudes of numbers are huge. I mean, people, individuals like you and me, I didn't know what a megawatt was really until I got into this. So when you think about a megawatt, that's like a small town almost to some extent. And a lot of people don't connect the dots when you're talking about that much power. And then you start getting people thinking at that local level, which is what we do, right? We're trying to find people who want to help professionalize the industry. We're trying to get sites built in small local towns around their hometowns, are trying to develop talent in those hometowns where maybe uh, a previous manufacturer has left and there's this bulk of talent now there that are blue collar talent how do we upskill them so that they can work at a site like this or gain some sort of skill set and then move and go somewhere else and have that i mean all of the wall street versus main street thinking when it comes to mining is really really interesting because nobody ever talks about the main street aspect of it, right they don't have somebody to help them because often you you pick up the phone and you call you call a broker, you call a big facility, you go, I want to place 10 miners, I want to place one miner, I want to place five miners and then grow little by little. Nobody wants to hear that at most of these sites. Whereas most of the people in the microminery club who we work with at Mining with Brad, across those 42 sites that we've helped to build over the course of the last six years, I think you have to look at it and say, this is good. And we need more people doing this type of work. I mean, so much so that this is why, uh, you know, the team over at Ocean, is a big part of that, a part of minor, minor mastery coming up, just like you guys are at Compass. Because I think you have to look at if it goes too centralized and big banks get involved. I mean, did you, BlackRock, right? BlackRock now is the largest ETF. Prior to them doing the ETF a few years ago, they deployed $400 million into mining, both across into this publicly traded companies and to their, into their own gear and everything else. That's huge. And now they're the largest ETF and now they're continuing to grow and they got their, their flag planted when my home state, Wisconsin, said, we're going to invest in the Bitcoin ETF, right? In the retirement pension fund. Mm -hmm. It's now on the map for the big guys to come in and go, we got to get as much of this as possible. And so much so that I don't, I don't know. Did you look at the numbers in terms of how much Bitcoin uh, the miners actually still hold comparatively to say what a BlackRock would hold or anything? That number keeps getting, that proportion gets less and less and less and less and less. And knowing that right now all of these mergers and acquisitions are happening on the Wall Street level, where does that put all the little guys? Like this morning in the Microminery Club, we actually talked through. We talked through uh, Riot's recent offer. We talked through Cypher and what's going on there. And there was one other. Oh, and we talked through Stronghold, right? Three of those, those are huge companies. And, and the guys that are in the Microminery Club of less than a megawatt, or they're going, well, this is worthless for me. And I go, no understand that your little slice of the pie is begin going to become so valuable, so valuable. Because especially here in the US where they can't grow as fast anymore, we're not gonna see 100 megawatt sites anymore. 
we're not even going to see 30 megawatt sites spring up. They're going to have to be less than 25 megawatts from here until 2030. That's a six year runway that if you are a small site, you're already there and can scale up and they're going to work with you because they know you're real. And if you're smaller than that, you can go spin up a half a megawatt or send one machine to Compass or someone else and you're running and you're beginning to get it. That's going to become invaluable over the course of the next six years. I don't care what anybody else says, right? I, I know the big Wall Street guys go, it doesn't work unless you're big. And I, and, I, and, I, and I have the facts to back it up, right? Like through the programming and the Build a Mind Bootcamp and everything, those 42 sites, um, we know by the end of this year, we're probably going to reach somewhere just shy of 300 megawatts in deployed power for mining. I mean that, and those are all small businesses. These are all small businesses that bootstrapped, they, they fundraised with their family maybe, they went out and they figured it out, they hustled, they, gr you know, they ground it out, and now they're up and running and they're continuing to grow their small business. So much so that they're creating jobs, they're putting taxes into local areas, they're being civic, they're being good citizens and being good civic partners in those communities. That's the stuff that matters. That's like the Bitcoin ethos, right? Like it's not even about the big numbers. The Bitcoin ethos is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network that anybody can have access to. That's why I think the small businesses and the micro miners and everything else and all the, all the service providers to them are really what embodies the Bitcoin network ethos. I don't know about you, Jared, but that's like the more and more I talk through this, the more convinced and more conviction I get in this whole small business, micro minery, uh, independent service providers, helping the little guys get going because that's how this industry stabilizes and becomes extremely secure over time. Within the US context, one of the things that happens is, or one of the things I should say that has been happening with throughout the United States, I don't care where you're from, this has been happening. And within my own town up in Massachusetts, I'll just talk about that. We have a nice main street. It's beautiful. Some of the architecture is literally from like the 1700s. It's a very like colonial looking place. And for all of my life growing up, right? There was an individual store for everything you needed. Fast yep. forward to where we are today and there's a Target and a Walmart and everyone, 80% of you know homes in the United States have Amazon Prime accounts, okay? Yep. So in that new context where we've kind of lost all these small businesses and people are really just disincentivized to kind of start a small business, it's an absolute kind of shining light that Bitcoin mining can be a new way for anyone to, like you said, hustle, hobble together some funding, maybe get a loan from the bank, maybe get a loan from a family member who's got some extra cash, right? Get that cash injection to put some stuff together and say, we're going to start a small business. Let's look at this first and foremost, like a small business and mm -hmm. the medium through which we're going to have our profit is going to be Bitcoin mining. Like even that within the US context where I have many friends who have tried to start small businesses, brick and mortar small businesses, not online digital businesses as many people do maybe a little bit more successfully due to our connectivity in the world we live in with e-commerce. But I, I know a couple right now at about two years ago, they took advantage of some pretty cheap commercial real estate up in Massachusetts and they moved in and they got a nice loan from the local, you know, the local co-op uh, bank or whatever it was. And they've been trying to do their small business. Now, without talking about what their industry or their sector is, I caught up with uh, uh, the woman from, from the partnership the other day and we were talking and she was like, man, I'll, I'll, I'll just be honest. I'm not going to use their names at all. And they're really not into Bitcoins. So they're probably not going to listen to this, but she was just like, you know, what? I'm going to shoot you straight. This is really tough. Like, I don't know how we're going to get through the next six months because the landlords are going to up the rent 5% and they're being kind because they could go up 8% and yep. all of our costs have increased, but we can't sell our product for the you know same percentage increase of the, of the cost increase. So we don't really know what we're going to do. So she was just basically very honest that like the idea of a small business, I really think is at the backbone of like, of America, starting a small business, doing that and making, mm -hmm. you know, growing it. Right. Yes. And so if that idea of the small business is kind of lost, 
it's a little bit of the piece of the American dream that's lost. And we're not obviously going to get into single family right. home ownership and real estate and other things and access to education on this particular episode. But taking all those things into account, if there can be a great option for people to kind of look at this new vehicle being Bitcoin mining and say, let's look at that as a small business. And we have some guidance from someone who has been around it for more than a decade, which Honestly, in Bitcoin mining is very, very OG. As you know, we were just talking about one X a hash was in 2016. It totally rings a bell. And it's honestly something that I hope resonates with more people who are thinking about, hey, I want to work for myself. I want to create my own business. I want to support my family. And like you said, you know, it can help boost local economies, whether that's just in tax yes. revenues or create new jobs. So could you talk about some examples of where it's created new jobs, where it's helped out the taxes, where it's helped to maybe lift up a community that needed some lifting up for sure and and that's not just here in the u.s i want to be very clear right like we've helped we've helped some people down in south america we're now getting a lot of calls and having a lot of conversations about small towns over in africa right like and working with some of the people over there some great people but just to your point about the examples for example we've got a site that's down in uh in the south um and they, when they showed up in this area, this arena of the state that they're in, uh, I'll just call it out, it's Deep South Operating, right? Where they decided to place their mine is in a very, I don't wanna say a very depressed, but an economically depressed area of Mississippi. And when we've gone back now and we've done the math, the jobs that, that they've created down there is north of like 15 jobs, right? So that's, and not only that, but one of them was maintaining a job with the power company and another, they, the power company also was able to go out and hire another four and a half linemen, right? They also then went out and hired people locally in that area. They didn't import talent. And they've got a staff, a full-time staff of four people and a few part-time people working there as well. All of, a couple of those individuals were coming from companies that were downsizing, right? And these are all blue collar individuals. And now they're being upskilled. They're learning. That's helping the area. It's a big focus. It's something that the county can rally around and put a flag in it and go, look, Look what we're doing and look at what's how it's helping the community because of what they've been able to do. And not only that, there's another there's another uh, site that we worked with where because they were able to go out and buy power through the co-op, they actually helped the co-op lower the cost of power. I mean, now everybody's paying less for their power, right? And that's really important to your point. I heard a stat this morning that that the dollar has actually lost 20% of its value since 2020. Like, so to that point, not only is that happening, but now they're generating Bitcoin through mining, both for themselves through self-mining and for their clients who are doing co-location. And now I know that some of the techs there are now learning this enough where they're like, hey, could we deploy a machine or two down here? Right? Like it's that type of energy that's grassroots that's really helping. That's just one site, guys. There's another site, uh, the guys at Wildcat, they opened up a storefront to your point, Jared. And that's where they're doing all the repairs. They had a grand opening. People from the town showed up. And now they're able to learn more about this because I believe mining in itself is the physical manifestation of this magical internet money, right? Mining is so different to so many people because we don't have the giant factories anymore unless you work in one, right? So people don't understand the, the sounds, the sight, the taste, the smell, the feeling of being around machinery that's working. And yet, that's why we give tours at all the events that we do, right? So like with Minor Mastery, that's why there is a facility tour wrapped in on that last day for those who want to go see a at scale 25 megawatt site. So they understand the amount of effort and work that goes into managing and building something like this. So if you look at how this can help all of these small communities, and especially those communities that have had manufacturing exit, right? You're able to at least replace or partially replace some of the economics by going in and leveraging the existing infrastructure that's there. And that's whether you're, you're going into a factory or a building that's that empty, but there's transformers sitting there and power's running there and you're revitalizing it and giving it life again, or if you're going to a green field out, out in rural USA, where there's a substation out in the middle of a field that was built 60 years ago that the power company has been trying to figure out what do we do with this thing? We knew back then that we were supposed to build this stuff 
And now they're actually able to invest money into that infrastructure for everybody around there, which then also leads to the internet being sent out there as well, right? So we've heard for the last decade and a half how they can't get internet to certain areas of the US for whatever reason. This is causing not only the economic from like hiring people, taxes, uh, all of those things, but also upgrades in technology being placed in areas where you've had people leave little by little just because they don't have access to the amenities. So you're finding ways where mining is helping. And we're not even, I'm not even going to dive into the fact of people making mining the second part of the business to like a greenhouse or to some other production asset, right? Which is also what we're doing. But you can't do that when you're a giant company. You can't have the creative business model that says, hey, not only are we going to mine Bitcoin, but we're going to leverage the heat over here and resell the heat because there's a greenhouse right next door type of thing, right? Like these are the things that small businesses can do that when you're talking Wall Street, you're going through all this red tape bureaucracy. And when you're at Wall Street, you can't make some of the human decisions because you're tied to the fiduciary responsibility of doing the most for your shareholders. And I think that's where this ethos of the Bitcoin network is beginning to disseminate a little bit. And the big guys are trying to figure out how do we maintain that? Because I know some, I know they are. And at the same point in time, balance our responsi our legal, legal responsibilities to our shareholders. You're a small business, a micro miner, you don't have to worry about that. You can do good in the world. Make more, do more good, period. I absolutely love that. And gosh, the you just hit on so many different points, right? So one of the things I first want to start with is the US dollar. I shared with you before we got on that I live most of the year uh, out of South America, somewhere between South America and, and North America, you know? And so people in the rest of the world are highly sensitive to currency. They're highly mm -hmm. sensitive to exchange rates. You could ask anyone in any part of the rest of the world that they're pegged to the dollar, what the exchange rate is, and they're going to give it to you within five cents. This is just kind of something we know. So when you say that, you know, we've lost 20% um, of the dollar. Well, if the dollar has lost 20%, I can tell you that many other countries, especially in the Americas have lost even more. And what humans have always done throughout human history is we move towards opportunities, whether mm -hmm. that's Latinos who are trying to get up to North America, looking for an opportunity, or that's people who are already in the U S and we're now looking at this local area where they were raised. And they're like, you know what, this place doesn't have internet and this doesn't have opportunity. So I'm going to move outside. And I think that that's taking all that into account that humans move towards opportunities. This is where Bitcoin and I think Bitcoin mining, especially flips everything. Cause you can have the opportunity where you are. You can literally yep. create your own force field and create your own gravity towards what you're doing. And like you're saying, go down to that green field find where the energy is and, and the, the local energy, you know, the local energy corporation is like, how are we going to, what are we going to build out there? And along comes mining with Brad who's like, well, I have this wonderful idea and I have these local people who actually live out there. And what we want to do is put this thing together and it's going to be, you know, generate all this stuff. And you've talked about mining mastery. So I, I think we should just dive right in because yeah. you also called out that like people just don't know how stuff works anymore. And like, I will also be very upfront. I really wasn't aware of what a megawatt was, or I wasn't thinking about energy, at least from this particular angle up until I joined Compass and I got into Bitcoin mining. And now it's like, how can we channel it once we have it with Bitcoin mining to really make the most good, to help the most people locally? And so can we talk about uh, mining mastery and what that is going to be, uh, yeah. the event that's going to go on? And if you just want to kind of give some highlights, some overviews, because I think what you said on the on, you know, on day two, we're going to actually go see a mine, which most people I, I see all the time, 99% of people who own Bitcoin have never been near a mine. And this isn't because maybe they're not curious or they want to see it. They just may not be where the mines are. So if you, if you could run through, that'd be great. For sure, yeah. So Miner Mastery is uh, July 23rd and 24th. The mining tour is actually on the 25th. And we're doing this, guys, in collaboration with the Bitcoin conference, okay? And the reason this came to be was through a lot of discussions with the team down there. And they said, hey, we know we have a great event, because they do. It's a phenomenal event. It's the largest Bitcoin event that happens. Tons of people come in for it. And the challenge they've always faced is that when you're new, whether new to Bitcoin or new to mining, you get lost in the shuffle, right? We've talked a lot about the small businesses and the individuals and the professionals who are trying to find their way in. There is not a clear path for those people. And, and it doesn't have to be clear, but there, 
there's not necessarily resources out there outside of like, for example, the, when we built the Build a Mind Virtual Bootcamp, that was around how do you put together information that's packaged in a way that you're sharing frameworks so that once people go through the course, they can start executing. The research can stop and like the how the how to research can stop and you can just start running the process. That's what we're doing with minor mastery. All right. And there's two tracks. We've got a track for the 101, the new miners. And I think the new miners really need to be at an event like this because being able to shake hands and meet somebody and speak to them face to face is so important in this industry, in a digital world that we are in. And I say that for a lot of reasons. One, it helps you not to get scammed. Okay. And we've had a bunch of that stuff happen over the last six years. I don't care what you say, who you believe, what it is. But part of that would not happen if people would make the effort to do a little due diligence, show up, meet somebody, shake their hand, say, hi, I'm Brad. I want to get into mining. What can you share with me? That's one part of it. The next part of it is, is making sure that you are in the room with the right people or the best people. So part of the 101 track is to set you up, give you a crash course end to end on what is mining so that you, you actually understand what you're getting into, what are the numbers and the economics around it, how do I structure my entity so that when I start deploying mining, when I actually zoom out, because the reason you would mine is to get acquire Bitcoin at a cheaper rate than if you were buying spot, you need to have some structured details in place. Your business structure needs to be correct. You probably need two business structures if you're doing hosting or running the facility and running a fleet. That's ideal. And then you need to make sure you have the right accounting methodology in place because guess what? Now with mining and Bitcoin and all crypto, you need to be able to know that I'm going to be taxed here. I'm going to have to show appreciation here. Otherwise, you will end up in a world of hurt, right? And then after that, you need to know why you're mining. You need to know right, the right equipment. You need to know where to plug it in. I mean, there's a slew of things, but just in those two things, we've got, we've got Nico Smead showing up, who's a mining economist, who's going to help everybody understand the numbers around what you're deploying and what that potentially will make you over the course of time. And then we also are bringing in Dave Shrepford. Dave Shrepford's a, an accountant, and he was actually one of the lead accountants who authored the new FASB rules on what is crypto and Bitcoin. So him being there to help you understand this is the structure you need. This is how you have to account for it. Those two things alone, guys, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Those two things alone, if you were to go have one-on-one -on -one meetings with those people, that's going to cost you well over a thousand bucks, right? To have them work through a framework, give you the tool to do it to make sure your economics work, and then give you the right information in order to set your business structure up correctly and do the accounting. And we haven't even gotten into... And by the way, it is different than just setting up a small business. It is different than running a service entity. There are intricacies that you need to know, and the rules are changing. That's why we have power, policy, and profit, right? So then when we look at the power aspect of it, we have a, a, an individual showing up who's helped to educate the 900 rural co-ops on what is energy in terms of Bitcoin mining. He's going to help you understand the language you need to say and speak in order for them to at least pay attention to you. And then not only that, this is where the crash course on the Bitcoin conference comes in. Bitcoin conference is sending people over to give you an orientation on what you need to go see in the exhibit hall and across the, the whole conference, who you need to go see and who are the vendors you need to go talk to based on what you want to do in terms of mining. Whether you want to do one mining, you know, one rig, mail it off, colo, and that's it. Or if you're trying to grow and build a whole fleet and become the next biggest publicly traded company, right? Those are different vendors you need to speak to. And part of these events that I really feel strongly about, especially for new people, is you go and it's like being a kid who walks into Disney World's Magic Kingdom for the first time. You don't know what you do. You don't know where to go. And you're like, wow. And then all of a sudden it gets to the end of the conference and all of a sudden you've got a little bit of remorse, not because you didn't have a good time, because then you leave and you go, well, crap. Now what do I do? That is the whole point of Minor Mastery for the 101 people, okay? Because we want to set you up for success. Bo, uh, Bo Turner from Abundant Minds always tells people that 
Uh, you don't know Brad yet, and Brad doesn't know you, but I promise you, Brad wants you to be successful because I'm a believer that if people get the success that they feel they have worked at and they've put in the effort to get, that if they have it, they will then pass that forward and do more good in the world, which is what all of our other, the mastery track people are looking at, right? We've built these facilities. They're, they're maybe five megawatts, 10 megawatts. Maybe I've got 50 megawatts. They're all calling me going, Brad, now what? We've done the thing. We built the thing. We're running the thing. How do we improve it, right? Like, what are the tools we need to add? It's optimization, which is phase five of our build a mind of six phases in our build a mind program. Um, and part of them are also looking at this going, hey, we're already beginning to get calls about people acquiring us, and we've never dealt with this before. So that's where the minor mastery track comes in, because now you actually have to not worry about the day-to-day -day tactics of running a mine, but you have to take a step back and look at business strategy. Right, And that's where Compass is coming. Compass has done this. They've seen a bunch of sites. They're going to help you guys with this stuff. The other part of it is we also have uh, Neil Galloway coming in from Foundry to teach some of this stuff as well. And then beyond that, we've got a number of special guests coming in. Right, So uh, one of the lead engineers from Block, for those of you who don't know, that's Jack Dorsey's company, is coming to walk through how mining innovation at an ASIC level and a, an equipment level is changing and shifting and how they're looking to partner with smaller facilities to do test batches, to run things, to try things out. And, and then beyond that, um, there's a whole slew of other people. There's a panel, panel just on power individuals. We've got Matt, uh, Macro Matt, Macro Minutes from uh, Bitcoin Daily Show coming in to be one of the MCs. He's putting together a power panel. People who, from renewables, nuclear, uh, uh, fossil fuels and others to have a panel to help people understand how you can access these things, right? I mean, there's a slew of things that you can learn to improve upon. And my goal always with this event is to give you structured and tactical tools that when you leave, you can start deploying it the next day. Because if you're not doing that after an event and you're going just for the networking, you're missing out on the meat and the potatoes of what actually makes these events really, really helpful. When you see there, you're there in person, you can meet the person, you can grab them, shake their hand, and they can't get away because you're in a group and you can ask them questions. So those experts who are on the stages, they are actually there in the crowd and you can have these conversations with them. You're not gonna get that at other events. I can tell you, you're not gonna get that at Bitcoin conference. I can tell you that you're probably not gonna get that necessarily at Mining Disrupt. And I can tell you, you don't get that at some of these super large conferences because these, these experts fly in and then they fly out right away and they're on to the next thing. This is all built on that ecosystem around the Micro Minery Club, the clients who've come through the Build a Mine Bootcamp, the crew at Compass and everybody. And the Bitcoin conference sees the need in it, which is why they put their stamp of approval on it going, yes, if you're new to mining, go to this event. If you're in mining, Go to this event because it's going to help you understand what you need to do to get the most out of the Bitcoin conference that week. And we didn't even talk about the tour. There's, I mean, that's, that's, you know, a whole other Go thing. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. Go no, ahead. I, take, take a sip of water. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in between innings. And then you should go ahead and talk about that because I think seeing is believing. And yes. I think, as you said, in a virtual space, the physical becomes so much more important, whether that's yes. I'm in Bitcoin and I own a couple sats and now I get to see an ASIC. I remember when I first saw that I got into Bitcoin in 2017. It wasn't until 2023. I finally saw an ASIC and saw a Bitcoin mine. That's crazy. And as we dive into a more virtual world, the time that you then spend with the people IRL, whether that's my friends, my family, it's so much more important. You know, I FaceTime them. I talk to them all the time. Even my colleagues, you know, even Curtis, I've now Curtis, I've seen Curtis so many times and every time we see each other, it just means a little bit more. So I do think like you've said, come to the event, be in person, shake some hands. You're going to get to talk to some people. And I really love that you called out that people are going to be hanging around. The experts are going to be hanging around. You're going to be able to get your 15 minutes with them. Ask them the question that maybe you just didn't want to raise your hand and ask in front of everyone else while you have to hold the mic and stand up. I get that because at other events and even the Bitcoin event, there will be people who come in, they get on stage, they do their thing. And they are literally, like you said, they're out the back door, they're in their Uber, they're going right to the air airport because they have to just, they have other things to do and that's okay. Yep. When you or they're look walking at the around like Michael Saylor with his crew of security guards. 
any chance. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. I didn't. Well, when you see me at the mining mastery, I'll, I'll make sure I have, you know, my security guards all touching their ear, you know, perfect. Um, (laughs) Right. They're all, they're all getting ready. Um, Okay, you said you've had your sip of water. Please, if you could please talk about sure. the tour, because I think that that is for many people that may be like, wow, I get to see a Bitcoin mine. Yeah. Let, so I'm going to talk about the tour and then I'm going to jump back to Tuesday evening quick, because I think it, okay. Tuesday evening Great. is also cool. Um, guys, a mining tour, every person who finally sees how a facility runs for the first time, something clicks, okay? Those of you who are sending your equipment off to a co-location company, right? Let's say you're working with Compass and they're placing you their, your equipment that you've purchased and you're hosting it with them. It's less of a client uh, vendor relationship and more of a business to business partnership relationship than I think most people understand. I mean, you and I were talking about this Amazon world, right? Everybody right now believes instant gratification. I put it in, I literally can pick up my phone, go on the Amazon app and get something dropped off at my office probably today, right? Mining is not that way. Mining is still a very young, young, young industry, guys, that has very complex or simple. And the thing that makes it complex is you're merging network architecture, uh, computer science, climate control, electricity, just on the mining side, let alone the HR, the business operations, the management of everything, the relationships and politics, guys. This is why the policy aspect, and we've got a great keynote speaker that I don't wanna drop yet because I think it's really important that we ramp up to that one. So stay tuned to hear who's coming because it's gonna be really good. Um, And understand when you show up and you see it for the first time, you go, oh, now I get it. I'm not just buying a computer, sending it off to a guy who's in a building and he's just plugging it in. This doesn't work that way, right? You're talking about massive amounts of moving air or or immersion fluid or liquid if you're doing hydro. You're talking about massive dynamics in the molecular moving through the air and moving through the ether, let alone, and that's just that's just climate control. Then you're talking about, guys, 25 megawatts. Your house probably has a 100 amp breaker, maybe 200 amps, okay? And it's at 110, and your house is probably using 3,500, like 3,500 to maybe if you if you leave the lights on because you got kids and your kids don't know how to shut things off, 10,000 watts, right? Over the, like, that's the size of your pipe that you're using max. In a megawatt, that is a million watts. Now think about the amount of power that is being used at this site. And not only that, I just talked about the benefits of it. And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because everybody will lose if they ever have that conversation with me. But you're using that much power. When you're using that much power, there's heat loss in the equipment. It's hot out. You're moving air. You're trying to manage. Machines are falling. These are computers that are doing one thing, and that's all they do 24 hours a day. Your, your, your refrigerator compressor turns on and turns off regularly. You're not using that power and when it breaks, it breaks because it's old. It doesn't break because you're moving massive amounts of air or liquid or whatever through it. And then you have to apply computer science to it, right? This is, this is like, um, a big apartment building where you've got a thousand different tenants, only you don't have human beings. And so if you can imagine a thousand units in an apartment building, all the headaches you would deal with. If you're the property manager, the maintenance guy, the independent contractors, the cleaning people, right? That's what running a mine is. And so if you are new to mining and you're buying a unit and you're shipping it off, the fact that you can understand how this might work at your facility. By the way, we've helped with 42 facilities. No two of them have been exactly the same. So they're all a little different. But if you understand that, when things go wrong, because this is an industry of when things go wrong, not if, again, not Amazon, guys. When things go wrong, you will help be able to diagnose and help that partner who's being your your hosting operator for you, troubleshoot your equipment, understand where it needs to be shipped off to as fast as possible because you came and you met the right people, and understand maybe the intricacies of your computer or your ASIC or whatever you're hosting. It's like your car. 
you've had your car for a while, you begin to understand when that little sound is going off, hey, the oil pan I know has a leak in it, I need to go put more oil in. That's what they're managing, guys, and they're managing thousands of these. There's no way they can become totally intimate with that machine the way you would become totally intimate with your car or your house or wherever you live. And if you understand how it works, you can keep track of things because there's great tools out there, all those management tools that are out there, right? Many over at Lincoin now load, that there's some great tools that you can leverage to monitor and track things, all the pools that are out there, right? We just talked about Ocean. Dude, I was talking to Market Ocean. I kind of did a tangent. I was talking to Market Ocean. There's some really cool stuff coming down the pipeline, guys, from this team, right? They're really working hard to make mining and accessible and, and maintain the ethos, the Bitcoin ethos for small miners. Whether you've got a BitX at home, for those of you who like to, to play the lottery, as I like to say, or those of you who are maybe using an S9 to heat your house, or even those of you who are mining at a facility. I, the way this is working and evolving, guys, is it's getting more diverse. And if you can't show up to an event like this and then go see a site, because you're not going to be able to see them, you don't get the chance to see facilities anymore. It just it doesn't happen. I, I remember trying to get uh, the last tour we ran down at Riot. You have to sign like it's a stack of paper this thick. Guys, all I'm going to ask you to do is sign a waiver like and no pictures. That's it. And you're going to get an in-depth understanding of how this site works, which is extremely important for all of the people now who have been calling me going, hey, Brad, I'm thinking about getting into the industry. How, how do I get into the industry? This is what I do. I got called up by some. I had this call today with a nuclear Bitcoiner, if you guys are familiar with him on, on X. He's like, I'm, I was offered this position. I need to know, like, what do you think? And in, he's already made up his mind, right? Like, but it's the understanding that there's not a clear path because we are trained. You, you graduate high school or you graduate school. You go and get a degree. That degree opens up a door, even though I would say 70% of us don't actually use our degree <laughs> based on what we're doing now, right? Microbiologist, biochemist here. I get it. And, and so ha being able to see how a facility works for those of you who are trying to figure it out, that is the best way for you to go, there's an issue here. If this is how all these sites are working, I can solve this thing. Guess what? You just found a way to enter the industry. One step at a time, guys. Okay, that's the reason why you want to go see a tour. Because it opens up doors and it creates the awareness for people who are on that tour to go, one, wow, this is Disney World. And two, holy crap, there's a ton of places I can help improve this. And I am a professional because I worked in a professional industry. And I can apply what I already know to this industry and they're going to find benefit. I think that's really important for people to understand. You know, uh, Eric Podowski is coming on to the Microminery Club next week. He's doing, you know, a whole bunch of talent acquisition and helping people find the right people. This is a huge, huge challenge for us as an industry. Where is the talent going to come from? Not just on the fun stuff either, guys. No offense to the Wall Street guys. I got a bunch of friends who are in Wall Street. They're white collar and, and they think they know mining. <laughs> Ask them to help you set one up one day and see, see how well they can help you out there, okay? Some of them can, don't get me wrong. A lot of them, they talk mining. They don't do mining, right? But we have a place for that. That's why I wanted to bring you back to the reception. So the reception on Tuesday evening at Nissan Stadium, by the way, which is home of Nashville's professional football team, because that's the way I have to say it. Put your head, put your, you know, think about that. Uh, at Nissan Stadium. We're doing reception Tuesday evening after opening remarks. It's a meet and greet, all right? This will be your best chance to introduce yourself, go up to people, and it's not just the expert speakers that we are bringing in to teach or run the panels or be your MCs. No, because guess what? The presenting group, the Bitcoin Daily Show, is coming in. We've invited uh, all of the guests we've had to come to that event, okay? For those of you who don't know, Monday is Meetup Monday, Tuesday is Content Creator Tuesday, Weston interviews, people like, you know, and I, and I don't know if all these people are coming, but Saifedean, Ben Sessions, you know, 
said bunny, like all these people who are the people teaching this stuff, how often do you get a chance to potentially meet those people? You know? So that's part of why we're doing it because we're building bridges, guys. This whole industry needs more bridge builders. If you're a bridge builder in this industry, that's what I've done the whole time. The whole time, guys. And it's because you, you put yourself in the right position to meet the right people. You have a conversation. You identify a challenge. And you go, I can help with that. And you're off and running. That only happens if you're face-to-face -face in the room with them most of the time. Period. I'm going to step off my soapbox about Minor Mastery and just suggest all of you go to MinorMastery.com. Go get your ticket. Right now, guys, it's a two-for-one, basically. You buy your ticket for Minor Mastery through this website, and then you can check the next box saying, I'd like a Bitcoin conference ticket, and you get both events for what you would get the Bitcoin conference ticket for. Just so you're aware. I think that's a pretty good deal. Well, take your sip of water. I'm going to throw you the mic back because actually, why don't you just go ahead? And I think you've been doing a lot of X spaces and other audios, mm -hmm. and I've seen you on many podcasts, and I was watching you on the hash rate up from Swan, which was excellent. If you could, if you could share where people can get in touch with you, you have the Minor Mastery event. Definitely call that out. Obviously, we'll mm -hmm. have all these links in the description. Uh, your build a mine virtual boot camp, uh, miningwithbrad.com. If you want to go out and just shout out where people can kind of get in touch with you as we uh, as we kind of close out here. For sure, I think I think the easiest way, if you're trying to get a hold of me, guys, the best way is to go to miningwithbrad.com and just fill out some of the information there. Uh, there's a form, and then Caitlin, Caitlin or Alexandra will probably get in touch with you. They're on my team. Excuse me, they're fantastic. Okay. I want to be very clear. I can't do all of this, guys, without the team that I've built. So treat them with respect. I keep them busy. They're really good people. And by the way, uh, they're, they're, they're phenomenal. They're moms, right? I'm surrounded by high quality driven women who really make me look good. That's honestly what it comes down to. Um, and, and they know that too. And we, we have fun with that because I go, great, you know, if I leave, you guys can just run it. And then, you know, with AI, just put a picture of me out there and you'll be fine. Um, but you can go to miningwithbrad.com. I think that's the best place. If you're interested in any of the spaces, right, we're, we're big time users of Twitter or now X, uh, go to Miner Mastery. At Miner Mastery is the Twitter handle for the event, uh, at Mining with Brad. Um, and then if you're interested in the Bit Bitcoin Daily Show, we run that seven days a week, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, that, that is at Daily BTC Show. And I think... Those of you who are interested in that, that's a way you can get to know me. You can get to know these group of co-hosts and educators that are out there trying to help you all be successful. And they're from all over the world. Uh, Jared, we've got two of our co-hosts live in El Salvador. Two of our other speakers live in the UK. We've got a regular speaker who lives over in Kathmandu, right? Like we've got a regular speaker who, co who calls in from Africa all the time. So guys, it doesn't matter where you're at. It really doesn't. If there's one thing that that... I think has been a driving force for me is I have been working really hard to pull the right members, the right people into a community. And this community of people just wants to help. Okay. This morning, another example, we were on the microminery club call and there's one individual who's having trouble getting their gear shipped to them in a timely manner. And the whole microminery club jumped in and said, Hey, I've got this person with this person helping. I've got this person and this person helping. Shannon, Shannon jumped in and said, I'll handle the logistics, right? Compass will help, help you handle the logistics. You know what? We're just going to take care of it. Like, you got to understand where this industry is, is it needs more high quality people. And I get chills every time I talk about this stuff, guys, because it's cool. It's, you don't find that. You don't find that all over the industry. It's a cool industry, but the, the, the values and the, the desire to help everybody be successful and this abundance mindset of going, there's enough to go around. We don't have to fight. Let's help each other because it's only going to help us in the long run. That's what you get when you show up to the things that my team helps to coordinate and organize. And Compass is a part of that, guys. Okay. I know Compass went through some rough stuff in the past. I know that. You all know that, but guys, in the last year and a half, two years, I know you guys have been working your butts off, Jared. You guys have worked on fixing all the issues you've had, 
You guys have done a great job on trying to remedy the issues that are still outstanding, and that's hard. But the empathy that is there and, and the ability for you guys to take accountability has been so impactful, and it's, it's inspiring for me because, like I said, this is an industry of when things go wrong because we're all figuring it out. We're all still figuring it out. It's not perfect, again. It's not Amazon. Jeff Bezos, man, you you hurt, right? Like, come on, man. Empathy and accountability. That's what this community is. Compass is a part of that. Everybody at the, the Minor Mastery event is a part of it, minormastery.com. All of the programming, guys, they all just want to help. So I know I just went off on another tangent. Apologize, but find me anywhere. BJ James 23 is my handle on most social platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I even got convinced to start a TikTok recently. Oh, God. <laughs> so you can find me anywhere. So uh, <laughs> it looks like you're going to be doing TikToks at the Minor Mastery. We'll have to be doing some uh, some dances there. I you guess, you going to do some dance moves some... with me? You know, are you, you know uh... what? If, 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 if it's for your TikTok, we might just have to. <laughs> um, thanks for taking the time today, Brad, to connect. This has been great i i'm really looking forward to, to meeting you irl at the event and i will leave all the links you just said in the description if you're watching this on youtube go ahead and subscribe if you're listening to it on podcast platform please go ahead and subscribe you can find us at compass mining on x used to be twitter linkedin and youtube brad thank you once again for taking the time and i will see you in nashville we'll see you in nashville my friend take care